You may be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Judge. It's now 9:18, and we're commencing uh, the second day of uh, trial in the courtroom. The record should reflect this is in case 16 CRI 187, State of Ohio versus Sean and Braid. All 12 jurors and all five alternates have returned to the courtroom. Defendants present with counsel as our counsel for the State of Ohio. We concluded yesterday's proceedings with a special. BCI Special Agent Ed Staley on the uh, witness stand, and I believe we are continuing with his testimony today. Correct, Mr. Tunnell? That's correct. So Mr. Staley, if you please come forward. Would you want to go back to No, Mr. Staley, you remain subject to the oath you took yesterday afternoon. Yes, sir, Judge. Your Honor, just as a housekeeping measure. Yes. The state moved for separation. That motion. Room, who's been subpoenaed as a witness in this matter or uh, who's discussed with counsel potentially being a witness in this matter even if you haven't received a subpoena you have to leave the courtroom at this time you're not permitted in until your testimony is completed if you remain in the courtroom you will be precluded from testifying in this matter you. you're welcome Good morning mr. Weaver Mr. McNamara, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. And uh, we're, we're still going through photographs. Uh, yesterday, the court had granted permission to publish those. Publish those. Thank you, Judge. So we'll, we'll it's, it's up and running as soon as you connect to it. Thank you, Judge. Well, Agent Staley, when we left off yesterday, we looked at several photographs from the residents at 363 and 363 and a half Cover Court. you recall that? Yes, we did. Um, we went through the first floor and most of the second floor. We we're about to go into the last bedroom on the second floor. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to hand you the mark for identification purposes at States Exhibit 75. What is that, sir? We are, yesterday we did some uh, views from the hallway, <clears throat> and I broke it down from doorway to doorway. As looking down the hallway, this would be the last door on the right if we're looking down the hallway. We're looking through the threshold into uh, what appears to be a bedroom. And Agent Staley, is this the state of the room when you were first in there and executing the search warrant on September 13th, 2016. Yes, this is how it was found, yes. Okay. There's an object, and I'm zooming in, there's a screen to the right of you, if that is easier to see when we zoom in on the, the computer. There's an object that was propped up against the wall by the window. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Was that object there when you, when you first uh, entered that room and executed the search warrant? Yes, it was. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but that's where that item was found. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. Is that a true and accurate representation of the area that is purporting to depict Agent Staley? Yes, sir. Uh, this photograph is same as before. Now we've kind of stepped closer into the threshold and now we're looking towards the right of the room down the wall as we're going into the doorway there. Agent Staley, what's that behind the rocking chair? Um, well, there's a lot of things there. So a pile of things? There's a pile of things in that location, yes. Good to say, thank you. Is that photograph states exhibit 76 a true and accurate representation of the area that it's reporting to the victim? Yes, it is. <clears throat> states exhibit 77. Okay, we've moved into the room. We 
just moved further into the room and we're capturing the stuff that would be in that room and the items that were found on the floor. So now we have a better view of that pile of things, is that correct? Yes, sir. What sorts of things did you see in that pile? There's various stuffed animals, uh, clothing. And down by what looks like a stuffed ape of some kind. What's that on the ground? Looks like an air freshener can. Okay. And again, to the left there, we see the item that we saw before propped up against the wall. Is that correct? Yes, sir. States Exhibit 77, is that a true and accurate representation of the area that's purporting yes, to Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. Exhibit Same photograph as before. I've turned the camera lens 90 degrees uh, so to capture the width. The width of the camera would be now showing the height in that room and all the things that were on the wall at that location. What sorts of things were on the wall right there, Agent Staley? Articles of clothing that are all just hanging on the wall. Now, as you are executing this search warrant, Agent Staley, did this draw your attention, these stuffed animals and pieces of cloth, clothing piled on the floor and then the clothing affixed to the wall right there? Yes, it did. Why is that? Um, there wasn't anything much else hanging on the wall in any other location in there, just this particular area. And it just caused me to question what might be behind all the stuff that's hanging on the wall. And it states exhibit 78, a true and accurate representation of what is reported to the fifth. Yes, sir, it is. But I hand you states exhibit 79. Before we look at that, though, I want to ask you, you've, you've just indicated you see this scene in states exhibit 78, and you want to find out what's behind. So what do you do? Um, we take things off in layers, uh, remove things kind of systematically and fo keep photographing as we're taking off the layers so that if, if we find something in those layers that we're documenting where it's at as we found it. All right, so let's look at States Exhibit 79 then. What is that, please? Uh, the air freshener is laying on the floor and we've removed some of the stuffed animals from around it to expose that a little better. Now, Agent Staley, if we zoom in on the ground next to the air freshener here, can you see that on your screen? Yes, sir. Um, that stuff there, it looks a little bit like rat poop. Is that what that is? What is that? No, sir, it's not. What is that? That's fly pupae. Is that, um, talk to the jury about That's a your... term, in the, in the science of entomology, there is a, a system or a progression, if you will, in the life cycle of insects. And the life cycle of insects, flies will fly in, they will deposit their eggs that will later um, turn into maggots. And then the maggots have several life, uh, not cycles, but Several, several different progressions um, as the, and it goes and then once they have reached their, their last uh, not life cycle but they've reached towards the end of their life cycle then they will migrate away from where they're at and I'm sure that most of you are familiar with how butterflies have a cocoon these will be the maggot cocoons and then once these split and open up, then the flies will emerge and then take off and then they will reprocreate. So Agent Staley, as you are removing items from that pile of clothing and stuffed animals and you come across these fly pupae, is that significant to you in your, in your uh, processing of the scene? It is, yes. Why? Because that's part of the process of decomposition. The intervention of insects, that's just part of it. Okay. States Exhibit 79, is that a true and accurate representation of the area that's purporting to depict? Yes, sir, it is. 
And those fly pupae, they aren't just on the ground there next to the uh, air freshener can. Are they also in various other places as you, as you remove these yes. pieces of clothing and stuffed animals? Yes. Thank you. That's a photograph of the air freshener. We tried to capture maybe the brand, <coughs> excuse me, and the make of it. Okay, in case that might be of some significance yes. later. Is that a true and accurate representation of the item that it's uh, depicting there, Agent Staley? Yes, it is. One is a continuation of removing things, working our way in underneath the pile to see what's there. And as as I asked you before, you just disconnect. Council, you want to approach? Let me talk about the issue. Better. Agent Staley, State's Exhibit 81, <clears throat> what is that a photograph of? It looks like uh, bedding, possibly sheets with pupae on. Okay, we are in the process you described previously of removing items that clothing uh, and stuffed animals and other items from in front of that area. Correct, yes. Okay. Is that a true and accurate representation of the areas depicting? Yes, sir. States Exhibit 82, have we just moved the camera over a little bit to the right? Yes, same photograph as before. We've just panned a little bit to the right now. I know, yeah, you haven't done anything. gentlemen I'm going to excuse you we'll take a five minute recess right and have you sit out here and, and, and work on the technical issue and get that resolved again don't discuss this case among yourselves don't let anybody discuss it with you don't make form any opinion or draw any conclusion at this point Thank you, Judge. Agent Staley, I think we were on State's Exhibit 82. Do you have that in front of you? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And uh, I think when we, we took our break, you had explained we're just a little bit to the right now of the previous photo as you are engaged in the process of removing the items of clothing and the stuffed animals from that pile. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Is State's Exhibit 82 a true and accurate representation of the area that it's purporting to depict? Yes, sir. Again, it's the same photograph, some other items have been removed, and we're still noticing the pupae that are mixed in on the floor and on the, in the clothing. Is that exhibit a true and accurate representation of the area that is purporting to depict Agent Staley? Yes, sir. Thank you.
Cease to the page four. What is that please? Same area. Um, Yes, sir. Thing, yes, sir. And that's a true and accurate representation of the area. It's the big thing? Yes, sir. Sensitivity right. for that is the next one here. A little bit to the left of where we were before, is that correct? Yes, sir. It's the same the same area, uh, just panned a little bit now more to the left, back towards the, I believe that's bedding that's there, and the fly pupae, and there appears to be like a stuffed animal laying on top of it. Okay. You mentioned the fly pupae. If we zoom in down on what looks like might be bedding and some items of clothing down there, is that what you're referring to? Yes, sir. The dark uh, oval objects. Okay. Stacy's exhibit 84, true and accurate representation of the area that is before the fix? Yes. Same area as before. We're just working our way down to the pile down towards the floor. And do we continue to see more fly pupae on the items of clothing here? Yes. These brown little kind of nuggets, is that correct? Yes. Stacey Exhibit 85, is that a true and accurate representation of the area it's depicting? Yes, sir. Continuation of uncovering what's on the floor. It's still fly pupae visible, is that correct? Yes, sir. Is that a true and accurate representation of the area that it's depicting? Yes. States Exhibit 87. It's just a continuation of the process, and now we're getting into articles of clothing. And as you continued, we're on this photo now, states it's in the 87. You were continuing to find uh, the fly pupae? Yes. States it's in the 87, a true and accurate representation of the area that is before you to Yes, it is. towards the lower level of, of things that were piled there, Agent Staley? Yes, it appears so, yes. Okay. And we can see, now that some of the items have been removed from that pile, something brown that was previously obscured. Can you see that, Agent Staley, in this photograph? You're talking at the furthest point of the photograph? Yes, I am. Yeah, it appears as though it's a door that's there. Okay. Up there at the top of the photograph is the, the bottom of the door, is that correct? Yes, that would be the bottom of the door, yes. And was that previously obscured by all of these clothes that were piled in front of it? Yeah, there was a pile of clothing, stuffed animals, bedding in front of that doorway. Okay, and could you see it with those things piled in front of it and the, and the things hanging, the items of clothing hanging in front of it? Not until we removed them, no. Okay. Stacey to 88, is that an accurate representation of the areas depicting? Yes, it is. Okay, again, I've just turned the camera 90 degrees using the width to capture 
some height from the floor up the doorway and the articles that were found along that doorway. And Agent Saley, that description is a reference to, uh, excuse me, State's Exhibit 89 that I just handed to you? It, it is. Okay. Now we see at the bottom of the photograph, at the base of the door, now that those... Items of clothing and stuff else have been removed. There's a red towel, is it? That's stuffed underneath the door? I, I believe so, yeah. It's a towel. Okay. And we have some, some more flying pupae, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, on top of that article of clothing, it looks like a, a child's sweater. And then continuing up, what is that? The black item that we see that's vertical yes. appears as though it's uh, black duct tape. Okay. Now, before removing the items, as we've gone through this careful excavation that you've, you've explained to us and then explained the photographs, had you seen that before that? No, that part was covered up. Okay. The state's exhibit 89, a true and accurate representation of the area that is purporting to depict? Yes, it is. Many was the mark for identification purposes that is state's exhibit 90. Ninety is showing that we've removed some more of the, the articles of clothing that would have been hanging on the door frame, exposing this black strip that we see, uh, the duct tape, black duct tape appears that it's over the seam between the, the edge of the door and the trim around the door. Now, Agent Staley, um, I'd asked you before about this pile of clothes and, and the clothes that were hanging in that part of the wall that were covering what we now know as a door, if, and if that was significant to you, is this black duct tape that is taped around at least this part of the frame we can see in State's Exhibit 90, was that significant to you as you were executing this search warrant? Yes, it is. How so? It's not commonly found um, in a lot of houses that I'm in. State's Exhibit 90, is that a true and accurate representation of the area that you're speaking? Yes, it is. State's Exhibit 91. 91 is showing uh, the top of the doorway, the, the right of the door that we see is the same as we had seen in the previous photograph. This is the upper level of the door. And now we're looking at the top of the doorway and the continuation of the black duct tape up the right side of the door in the trim and across the top of the doorway. And is State's Exhibit 91 a true and accurate representation of what is purporting to the victim? Yes, it is. On top of the door frame, there's something sticking out. What was that? Nails. Okay. Is that what the clothes were hanging from? Yes, it is. And I think we can see on State's Exhibit 91, if we pan all the way to the left, there's still one article of clothing hanging up there. Is that yes. right? Okay. Is that a true and accurate representation of what's important to the Yes, sir. State's Exhibit 92. Same photograph as the previous one, a little bit closer view of what we've seen previously. Agent Steely, it looks like there's a, a strip of black duct tape running up and then a separate strip of tape running left to right and a small piece connecting them up in that corner. Is that correct? Yes. So some care had to be given to the placement of this tape, is that correct? Correct, yes. State's Exhibit 92, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the area that's supporting to the victim? Yes, it is. Now on State's Exhibit 93, please describe that. 
The doorway's been uncovered of the articles of clothing and whatnot that was hanging from the top of it, exposing the door and the trim and the duct tape that was placed on the seam between the door and the trim all the way around from top across the, or from the bottom up across the top and down the other side. State's Exhibit 93, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the door as you just described to the jury after those clothes have been removed? Yes, sir. State's Exhibit 94. This would be the same door. Now we're focused on the bottom portion of the doorway, and it shows that the tape goes all the way down to the floor on both sides covering the seam between the door and the trim. And we see too that red towel that you had testified to earlier, is that correct? Yes, sir. On top of the towel, what is that? Uh, fly pupae. Okay. CC Tip 94, is that a true and accurate depiction of the area that it's going to the base? Yes, it is. Now, Agent Staley, I just handed you Stacey to the 95 before we we'll talk about that. What did you do? You've explained that you, you see this pile of things and, and you want to uncover them to see what's behind, so you have carefully removed clothing and other items. Now we've got the door with the seal on it. What do you do next? All right, the tape was taken off and preserved uh, for any possible evidence that might be on the tape. And then uh, the doorway was opened. So Stacy's in the 95, what is that? That's the, the doorknob would be to the left, the edge of the door, and then to the far right would be the trim. So that's the separation between the door and the trim as you're making entry into this area. And is this how you saw it when you were processing the scene on September 13, 2016? Yes, it is. Agent Staley, over the keyhole, what is that? Pardon me? Just, just below the doorknob, looks like there's something affixed to where a keyhole would be. Can you see that on the zoomed in? Uh, duct tape. Okay. The black duct tape. Fair to say that's another place that something, an odor or something could get out that would need to be sealed. It would be possible, yes. Okay. Now, on the door itself, what are those white things? Maggots, fly larvae. And is that another step that you've already described in, in the fly reproduction cycle? That would, be, that would be before the fly pupae process, yes. This is to the 95, a true and accurate Yes, it is. State's Exhibit 96. What is that, please? We've opened the doorway completely now and looking in the closet uh, and documenting what we found inside the closet. On the door itself, what do you see there? The white specks? Yeah. The white specks are maggots or uh, fly larvae. All over that side of the door? Yes, sir. Inside the closet itself, Agent Staley, what did you find? Right, as, as you open the door and you see this picture, what do you see? It appears as though it's a pile of clothing. Now, knowing what you know to this point in your processing of this scene, there was the pile of things, the door was obscured, the, the frame was taped, even the keyhole was taped. Was that significant to you, that pile of clothes inside of the closet? It is, yes. Why is that? 
because the fly the fly larvae or the maggots is a is a part of a decomposition process that takes place and finding just a pile of clothing inside the closet door doesn't really make sense. Agent Staley, did you notice an odor when you opened the door? Significant odor, yes. Describe it, please. It was deplorable. Have you, Agent Staley, in the course of your employment as a police officer and, and specifically as an agent for BCI, uh, responded to the scene, a scene where a, a decomposing body was present? Many times. That's a lot of what your job is. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir, it is. Are you familiar then with the odor of a decomposing body? I'm, I am very uh, familiar with decomposition, yes. Not necessarily human, but just decomposition. Okay. So the odor was the odor that you encountered when the tape was removed and the door was opened. Was the odor that you encountered significant to you in your processing of this scene? Yes. What did you do after you saw this? You saw the pilot closed, you've got the odor, you've got the maggots and the pupae. There's a process of doing the same thing that we did on the outside of the door, and it's just removing layers of clothing uh, to, to try to find out what's underneath that pile of clothing. And so did you remove the items of clothing? I did. What did you discover? A human corpse. What was the state of the human corpse that you discovered? It was in a decomposition state, yes. Okay. Now, we're not going to go through as many photos as we did before showing the process by which you removed these, these items, but did you, was it a similar process where a few items were removed and you took a photograph, a few items were removed? Yes, it was. Okay. At some point, what was the first thing that you saw that, that led you to the conclusion that there was a human body present in this closet? A human foot. Okay. Agent Steely, I'm handing you this with Mark for identification purposes as State's Exhibit 97. And State's Exhibit 96, by the way, was a true and accurate photograph? Yes, it was. Okay. State's Exhibit 97. What did you see? Uh, upon removing some of the clothing on the left side of the closet, uh, the discovery of this human foot and this leg. And is that a true and accurate representation of this part of the excavation process that you were engaged in? Yes, it is. Was there anything significant about the foot and the leg that you saw? Uh, there's a binding. What we're seeing looks like the toes, the, top, the, the edge of the foot, the toes at the very top, down to the lower right, the heel, and then just below that, you've got a horizontal black line that appears as though it's a ligature that goes around the ankle. Was that significant to you in your processing of this scene? Yes. Why? It's not commonly found in a lot of houses that I go into. Agent Staley, what's a ligature? A ligature would be uh, like a binding, something that restricts <laughs> movement. Uh, can be used for uh, restraint. Um, it can be made of almost anything. Anything can be used for a ligature, uh, but it's, it's, it would be commonly referred to as a binding or a restraint, something to restrict movement. Okay. During the process of removing these items of clothing from this closet, did you find maggots and pupae like you did on the outside? Uh, there would have been more maggots than pupae inside the closet. And in the photograph that we're looking at here, State's Exhibit 97, were there maggots in this photograph? Yes, sir. Where? Uh, everywhere. On the leg, on the wall, on the, on the floor trim. So Agent 
you say leaf thumb, that's what you first saw, the first part of the human body that you saw. That's it is, you yes. Said. Then you remove the other articles of clothing and, and observe the body, is that correct? Yes, sir. Stacey's exhibit 98. Is that the body that you referenced? It is. Please describe, Agent Staley, the state in which you found this body. Uh, the body was prone, which means it was laying face down. The legs were bent upward. The hands were positioned slightly behind the back. And there were bindings, ligatures, restraints, whatever you want to call them, on each of the extremities that could have been connected at some point to each other. So from what you see here as you, as you open this up, the head is where, rel relevant to the opening of the closet. At the far end, what you see is the wooden trim, the horizontal wood piece. The back of the head is, is against that piece of wood. So face down, back of the head is up, and the top of the head would be against the wood trim on the other side. And this photograph, the perspective would have been from the entryway of the closet? <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. And you indicated that the, the bindings or the ligatures could have been connected. From what you could see here, you could at least see that there were bindings of some kind on, on each. You mentioned extremities, but the ankles and the wrists, both ankles and wrists, is that right? Yeah, I believe from that angle we can see both ankles have the black ligatures on them, and then the be the right arm that we see in the right hand up on the back. Uh, the red and white, I'm not sure, it's an article of clothing, tied, it's around the wrist. Now, Agent Staley, you, you mentioned that was an article of clothing. Were, were all the, the bindings here articles of clothing? I from, believe From what so. you could see? Yeah, I believe so. Was that consistent with anything else that you had seen in the house? Um, yes. What's that? The mattresses had bindings on them, articles of clothing that were tied to the mattresses. So the mattress on the ground floor, did that have items of clothing affixed to it so that it could be a binding? It did. The mattress on the second floor in the room where this body was located, did that have articles of clothing attached to it that could be used as a binding? Yes, it did. And in the same way as, as this body has those bindings attached to her ankles and wrists. It could be consistent with that, yes. Okay. Did the body in the closet have any clothes on? Not that I remember, no. Other than the ligatures. Okay. And clearly we can see from this photograph there is no clothing on the lower half of the body and the back. Is that correct? Correct. Stacey took a 98, a true and accurate representation of the body that you found in the closet at 363 Colbert. Yes, sir, it is. Agent Staley, after discovering the body that was located in that closet, did you continue with your photographing of the house? Yes. Okay. I'm going to hand you a mark for identification purposes at State's Exhibit 99. This will be in the, the same bedroom. Now we're photographing. Uh, the edges of the mattress that have the articles of clothing tied to it or the bed there. And that's what you had described to us previously, that the articles of clothing were, were affixed to that? Yes, sir. Is that connected, Agent Staley, that article of clothing, the top one, the green one, to the bed frame? It appears as though it is, yes. And the orange one on the bottom, 
Is that affixed to the bed frame? Yes, it appears as though it is. Agent Staley, was, was that significant to you? These bindings that were tied onto the bed frame? Yes. Why? Again, not commonly found in a lot of the houses that I'm in. Okay. State's Exhibit 99, is that a true and accurate representation of the area? It is. State's Exhibit 100, you mentioned previously that item that was propped up against the wall, which we're going to talk about a little bit more once you get through with the placards. Um, is that a closer shot of that? It is, yes. That's just to the right of the window on that second floor, and it would be just to the left of the closet that the body was found in. And what, what is that item? What did you observe on it? Well, I wasn't sure at the time until we looked at it a little closer, and it appears as though it has uh, prophylactic condoms all over the end of it. So there's a handle of some kind? Yes, it, it goes from the, where we see the condoms at the bottom, and it goes upward and to the left, kind of up behind that curtain, if you will. Um, probably another couple feet in length. And then the end that was touching the ground in this photograph, you say it was wrapped in condoms? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Okay. State's Exhibit 100, is that a true and accurate representation of what is reporting to the fix? It is, yes. State's Exhibit 101, so before I, I ask you about 101, uh, just hand to you. Now we've been through the <clears throat> ground floor. We've been outside first and, and looked at the outside scene. We've been on the ground floor and we've been on the second floor. Did you also, and in the attic, did you go to the basement? We did, yes. So please tell us about the 101. 101 would be, from the top of the stairway, there was a door that, that uh, obscured the stairway that goes into the basement. That door was open and then a photograph was taken looking down the stairway, and this is what we're seeing here. Is that a true and accurate representation of the area that is reported to the fix? It is, yes. State's Exhibit 102. 102 is we've made it to the landing down the first flight, and now we're turned to the right, looking down into the basement proper itself. To the right of the stairs in this photograph, what is that? Uh, there was piles of bags of trash. Now, Agent Staley, I'd asked you about the odor of decomposition previously and your previous professional experience with that and what you smelled upstairs. Did you notice an odor when you were in the basement? Yes, I did. What kind of odor did you notice? There was. Uh, there was an odor of decomposition present in the basement as well, and there was also an odor of this trash that had been piled up. There was a, a large pile of trash in the basement. And it states to 102 is a fair and accurate depiction of the area that it is pointed to the basement? Yes, it is. This is in 103. 103 is from the bottom of the steps, looking back along the steps and just capturing uh, the contents and, and the items that were in the basement as we found them. And again, we see on the upper right-hand portion there, is that an agent with BCI in protective gear, just the, the legs and feet? Yes. Okay. And right in the center of that picture, is that a different view of the pile of trash that we observed as, as you were going down the stairs? It is, yes. 
what we saw, correct me if I'm wrong, in the last um, photograph what were bags, is that right? Yes. And now we see on top a, a box with contents, an open box with contents inside. Yes. That is on top of this pile of trash. Yes, sir, it is. Stacy, to the 103, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the areas we point to the picture? Yes. Stacy, to the 104. Again, this is the same area, the piles of the bags of trash that were in the basement at the, at the bottom of the steps. I've just moved away from the stairwell a little bit now, focusing back towards uh, the area of the steps and documenting that bag of trash. Gentlemen, if you need to stand up and stretch, feel free. Thank you. Oops, didn't black out on me. Be okay to give the jury a break right now, Mr. Tonell? Okay, it's 10.45 a.m., ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let you go ahead and, and uh, return to the jury room for a brief break. If anybody else needs to take a break and use the restroom, now's a good time you, to do that. Remember, don't discuss this case among yourselves. Don't draw any conclusions or render any opinion. So that box, that open box, is that the same one we saw from the first picture down in the basement that's on top of that, that pile of trash? It is, yes. Okay. About how high was that pile, Agent Staley, if you recall? Uh, maybe three and a half, four feet off the concrete floor. Okay. So on your body, maybe about halfway up? Approximately, yes. Okay. This is 104, a fair and accurate depiction of the area that is purporting to depict? It is. Stacey to the 105. 105 will be, there was a chest freezer on the back wall. Um, the, the stairway leading down to the basement would be uh, on the right side of that chest but further back to where we came from. And this chest was just sitting over there against the wall. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what is purporting to depict? Yes, it is. Did you search inside of that chest freezer? I believe we looked inside of it, yes. That states exhibit 106 I just handed to you. Yes, 106 would be after the lid was open, a photograph was taken of the interior of the chest freezer. Okay. Just searching in there to see if there's anything of, of note, is that correct? Correct. And nothing of note was found, is that right? No, sir. Stacey Dibble 106, is that a true and accurate depiction of the area supporting to the victim? It is, yes. <laughs> Stacey Dibble 107, where else in the basement did you search? There's a um, crawl space there was a hole in the, the basement wall with a crawl space that led back into a, an area that was still underneath the house. And this would be a photograph of that hole in the wall that led back into that crawl space. 
Excuse so doing your due diligence in executing this search warrant processing, processing this scene, you checked in the crawl space, is that right? Yes. Anything of evidentiary value? No, there, there was some discarded stuff in there, but nothing of value. State's Exhibit 107, is that a true and accurate depiction of the areas reporting to depict? Yes. side of the stairs as you walked down. Did you search through the, the pile of trash? Yes, we did, yes. And did you uncover anything? Another human body, yes. Okay. <clears throat> the next photograph we're going to look at, um, there is a, a part of that body, is that correct? It, yes, sir, you're right. Okay. So State's Exhibit 108, please describe what Um, the upper right hand portion of the photograph, you can see some horizontal wood that would be the stairway that's leading down into the basement. The vertical post that we see there would be a support for that stairway. Going down the left side in a box, you can see that there's a human hand with some jewelry or bracelets on that hand. Daily as we orient ourselves in the basement here, the to the on the right side of the photograph there, that pile of, of trash, is that the same pile of trash that you've testified to previously next to the stairs? It is. The box that we had previously discussed is right there at the top right hand corner. Okay. State's exhibit 108, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the areas before? Yes, sir, it is. Exhibit 109. Agent Staley, you've already described the process by which you, you systematically removed the items of clothing and stuffed animals uh, from the second floor bedroom. Did you engage in a similar process in this pile of trash? Yes, we did. So tell us what we're going to find in State's Exhibit 109, please. Uh, the box that was previously stated in the previous photographs has been removed. And now we're going to start to uh, pick the bags of trash off and systematically work our way down. <coughs> so that box we talked about before, it's not on there anymore. One of the things that you removed, is that correct? Yes. When we zoom in a little bit, there are a couple of items on top of those bags of trash, which would have been underneath some other trash that you've removed. What do you see there? Uh, there's a polar pop cup, uh, air freshener, and a cigarette butt on the trash, the white trash bag. Maybe some old coffee grounds in the upper right part there? Yes. So Agent Staley, uh, fair to say there's some bagged trash and, and some unbagged trash as well, just loose trash? Correct, yes. Okay. Is that a true and accurate depiction of the areas reported to the Big States Exhibit 109? It is, yes. States Exhibit 110. <clears throat> one ten. One ten, it'd be. We're in the same area. The Polar Pop cup would be on the right hand side, and the air freshener just above that. Uh, we're moving some of the bags to try to see what might be underneath the bags of trash that were on the basement floor. And so in this photograph, we see an agent, a BCI agent, who's, who's lifting up 
this one of those bags yes, right there. And so what did you, did you see? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. What did you see when that was lifted up? Uh, there was maggots and pupae on the bottom of that one trash bag that he was exposing. Okay. So, Agent Staley, uh, the, the same significance that you indicated before, you've got the odor now in the basement. Now you see the uh, fly pupae and, and maggots. Yes. Significant to you in your process of this scene? Yes. State's Exhibit 110, a true and accurate depiction of what is purporting to depict? Yes, it is. Agent Staley, to the right of that bag that had the maggots and pupae on it, there appears to be a blanket? Yes. Okay. As you continued your search through this pile of garbage, did you find anything underneath the blanket? Another human corpse. It is, yes. State's Exhibit 111, that you've removed part of the blanket here. Yeah, the, the bags have been pulled away, and now looking underneath the blanket, we're uncovering another human corpse that's laying on the concrete floor of the basement. So that, the body, you see that was on the ground with the trash pile on top. Correct, yes, sir. <laughs> hey, Justelia, as we zoom in, to the, in this photograph, to the left of the body are, are a couple of cups, and then to the left of that, what is that object? I believe it's a black purse. Okay. Or handbag. would be uh, taking off more of the plastic bags of trash from on top of that blanket and just trying to uncover, uh, get down to the blanket to find out what's underneath of it completely. So from the angle that we saw before, is it fair to say you'd be a little bit to the left of where you are now? To view the side of the body, I can show you the other yeah, I believe we've moved a little bit more to the right. Okay. So in the previous photo, we saw the body that was covered by the blanket. And now as we move to the right, we're moving towards the stairs. We see some more of the trash that had been piled on there that has not yet Correct. been moved. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And in this photograph, we'll zoom in a little bit. Other item, are there other items of loose trash there? Yes. There was a pack of cigarettes and some cigarette butts. Okay. Is State's Exhibit 112 a fair and accurate depiction of the areas of points of the fix? It is, yes. State's Exhibit 113. Uh, 
as we're looking at the photograph, the upper right hand portion would be the, the back side of the body that was found on the concrete floor mixed in with a bunch of trash and garbage that was on the, on the basement floor. And you can stay, I'm going to bring to your attention as I zoom in here. Around the neck of the body, what is that? It's another item of cloth. I don't really know if it was clothing, but it was a ligature or a binding or a restraint that was around the neck of that human corpse. Agent Staley, the body that you discovered underneath this pile of garbage, describe its state of, of clothing. Was she dressed? Partially. Okay, what part of, of her was undressed? Uh, the lower half of her body. She had one boot on, if I remember. It was like a calf-high boot. And then the rest of her lower part of her body was unclothed. Stacey's exhibit 113, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what's reported to the victim? Yes, it is. Stacey's exhibit 114. 114 is a close-up of the, I believe, the left hand, just indicating that uh, the victim had jewelry on, that there was some kind of tattoos on that uh, wrist that could potentially be used for identification. Okay. And a couple of her nails as well, is that right? Yes. Stacey's exhibit 114, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what's important to the victim? Yes, it is. Did you stay on any of been marked for identification purposes at Stacey's exhibit 115? Before we talk about Stacey's exhibit 115, You've described the process by which you removed the garbage from on top of this body yes. to uncover uh, the body underneath. Prior to the body being released, did you photograph, observe and photograph the body as, as she was when you found her? Yes. Okay. You would previously indicated that she didn't have any clothes on from the waist down. Correct. What, was she decomposing at all? Yeah, she was in uh, not as advanced as the previous body that was shown, but yes, in, in a state of decomposition, yes. Okay. And as part of your due diligence in recording the scene, uh, you took a photograph of the body, is that correct? Yes, I did. To record her as she was found? Yes. And for identification purposes, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Stacey's exhibit 115. Please tell us what that is. That would be the human corpse that was uncovered on the basement floor. Uh, the black background that you see is a body bag that was uh, the, the coroner's office was uh, brought to the scene for recovery of the body and that body was placed in that black body bag for removal from the scene by the coroner's office. Okay. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what is reporting to the victim? It is. And that ligature was still around her neck when she was sent to the medical examiner. Yes, right? it is. Thank you, Major Staley. Agent Staley, the hand you have marked for identification purposes as State's Exhibit 116. In addition to observing the scene as it was when the search warrant was executed, when the police got there, and searching through the items and, and recording the bodies that were recovered, did you also uh, take into police custody some evidence? And, yes, I and, did. And photographed some evidence as well. Yes, I did. Okay. Stacey's 
State's Exhibit 116. Uh, it's a photograph of a black handbag that was found at the scene. Okay. And was that, where specifically in the scene was that located? Uh, Do you mind if I refer to my list? Well, let me jump in just a moment. When you are collecting evidence, do you record that in any way? Yes. There's a placard that's placed at the, the site where the evidence was recovered, and then uh, photographs are taken for documentation purposes according with those placards and the placement of where it was found. Then that's entered into uh, an evidence receipt program that we have on a, uh, uh, an iPad, which in turn generates a decal or a, a label for that piece of evidence. And it also produces a evidence receipt form that shows the number that it was assigned, the location of where it was recovered, a brief description of the item that was recovered, who recovered it, and the date and time that it was processed. Okay. And do you keep a written log? Yes, written we evidence do. Log? Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. Now, the top document, is that a, a BCI document? It is not, no. Okay. Does it appear to refer to an attached BCI document, though? Yes, it does. Well, I'm going to ask you then about the BCI portion of that. Actually, page four is the, the starting of my log sheet. Okay. So from page four to the end, are those BCI evidence logs? Yes, they are. Yes. Okay. And are those your evidence logs relative to this case? Yes, they are. All right. Now, are those, you just described how that's done. Uh, information is put into a system, and then it records the item number, where it was found, who found it. Is that a printout of that information? It is, yes. Is that kept in the ordinary course of business over at BCI? It's kept on a server file with the company that maintains the software for this, this program that we use. Okay. And then copies of this are maintained on our server at BCI. I've got you. It's for the purpose of coming into court and having a, a description of where stuff was found and who gave it to who and all that. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, on each... So... Each item that, that was collected, is that, that has its own number? Is that what you said earlier? Yes, it does. All right. So if we go to <coughs> BCI item 72. And by the way, is that a true and accurate copy of the evidence log in this case, Agent Staley? I believe it is, yes. Seventy-two would be a billfold description. It was found under the stairs of the basement, collected by myself on September 13th. Okay. And Agent Staley, for each one of these pages in your log, with a, a number and then an identifier or a description of what that thing is, at the bottom there's numbers on this page, for example, 1 to 11, and then an indicator of who gave it to who, is that correct? Yes, it is. And on what date? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go through a couple of those items in particular, but I just wanted to, for Exhibit 116, that was found in the basement of the stairs? Yes. All right. There's 116A, true and accurate copy or representation of the uh, thing is purported to depict. Yes, it is. Right. Exhibit 116A. 
117. One seventeen would be opening up that billfold and photographing what's inside. Okay, is that a true and accurate depiction of the inside of that billfold that you photographed on September thirteenth? Yes, it is. Stacy's at one eighteen. It's a photograph of a check, uh, check number 1070 in the name of Stacy Hicks. Was that also found down in the basement? It was, yes. <laughs> Is that Stacy's 118 a true and accurate representation of what is purported to depict? Yes, sir, it is. State's Exhibit 119. What is that? Um, 119 would be an item, again, not exactly sure what that was, but it appeared as though it had the makings of uh, one of those sexual devices, if you will. We're going to talk about your search on the first floor and what you found up there, but we've already seen some pictures of, of an item a pulled item that was wrapped in condoms. And so this is a photograph from the basement. Stacy did a 119? Yes. Does it appear as if this item, let me zoom in a little bit, that it was wrapped in a condom but that broke? At one time, yes. Okay, and is that why you suspected this might be one of the homemade sexual devices? Yes. Okay. That was discarded down at in the basement with the rest of the trash. Correct. That was yes. piled on top of that woman's body. Yes. Okay. Now, Agent Staley, after going through the house and photographing it as you found it, and going through and finding the, the bodies of the two deceased women that you've, you've talked to us about, what did you do next? Um, we've gone through, we've photographed as we found things in a, uh, in just un finding the bodies, uh, we back up and then introduce some placards for evidence documentation so things can be pre, you know, identified later on. And in turn, Agent Hootman comes in and scans various areas throughout. We were working in other segments of the house while Agent Hootman was scanning other areas of the house. So we were kind of just moving around. Uh, different things were going on at different times so that the, the documentation could take place. Okay. And Agent Hootman scans, that didn't um, disturb the scene in any way, is that correct? No. It was just something that was happening in a different room while you were putting down placards and collecting things as evidence. Yeah, you can't be in the same room with the scanner at the same time that it's running because it interferes with what is being scanned. If you're moving around while it's taking it seven or nine minutes, it could cause a problem. Yes, sir. All right. Stacey's at 121. Now we're back up in the bedroom on the second floor, and there are some yellow placards with black numbers on there. Did you place those? Yes. And I mean, we just talked about it, but is that to record what these things are for evidentiary purposes while you're collecting them? Yes. Tell us about the items that you, you marked here. The, the numbers that we see that are placed on the bed were for the items that were tied to the bed, the ligatures, bindings, whatever. Uh, number 12 that we see would be the other suspected sexual device, and then 13 would be a, the can of air freshener that was found once we were starting to remove those items off of the floor. Okay. So, four, in this photo, four, item four, six, seven, eight, and nine are all referring to 
pieces of clothing that are attached to the bed frame? Correct. Was yes. And like the case that's BCI item twelve, is that correct? Yes. Showing defense counsel states exhibit twelve. Say we already had 12 identified. It's BCI item 12, but it's states exhibit 122 that we're looking at right now. Yes, sir. We've got some stickers and we've got some initials and a sticker up here. So let's start over all the way over here, Agent Staley. You recognize this? My initials, yes. Okay. So you took this item, item 12, states exhibit 122, into evidence, into police custody. Yes, sir. Now, why initial on this side over here? Well, we, we have to initial the seals around the box. Anywhere that could be open has to be initialed with our signature, our initials, and then with a date that it was sealed up. That's part of our protocol at the lab. So, if something is then sent off to be tested by, by a chemist or a scientist at the ECI laboratory. They can see that it's sealed and they know, okay, Agent Staley sealed this, it's in a sealed state, so we know this is how it is. Yes, sir. Got it. It's okay. There's a sticker as well with a description, and it's got evidence number 12, suspected sexual device. Is that from BCI? That's the label that was generated from my, my iPad along with the, the evidence list. They both coincide. The program generates both at the same time. Okay. And then down here we got your initials again, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. And then, is that you up at the top? Yes, it is, yes. All right. So, I'm going to ask you to open this up and here's some scissors. Take a look and see what's in there. Now, actually, before you do that, Agent Stanley, I'm sorry. I'd like to ask you a couple more questions because this item on your log here, you collected and then provided it to whom? To everything went to the Ashland Police Department. <coughs> okay. And to, to who specifically, the Ashland Police Department? Um, if you need to refer to State's Exhibit 120, feel free. I believe. Detective Brian Evans was the person that received it from him. And that's what's indicated in your evidence. <coughs> yes, it's on the sheet. <coughs> All right. So you get it. Ashland PD then puts it into their evidence slot. And up at the top here, we see there's a red sticker. Do you recognize that red sticker? It could be one of our lab stickers. Yes. You're familiar with those, right? Yes. So this item at some point was sent over to the lab know by the sticker, is that correct? Yes, it was. Okay. And so, are you familiar with whether or not it was tested? Not any results or anything, but whether it was tested? I believe it was tested, yes. So, we're, are we or are we not expecting the item that's open here to resemble the photograph? No. Okay. Has it been taken apart? Yes. Okay, thank you. I wanted to ask that before we open it up. They so, don't put it back together. No, thank you. Could you go ahead and open it up and we'll...
need to silly to describe what, what is in there? Well, there's the, the wooden pole, and then there is, uh, looks like craft paper wrapped up around, it says towel layers on it, with, looks like with lab numbers on it. There would be another envelope with some lab numbers on it, it says condom two layers. Another envelope, condom, one layer, and then another envelope with lab numbers on it that says sock, layer three. And Agent Staley is the uh, longer part of the suspected sexual device in there as well? Yes, the pole in here, yes. Okay, could you show us what that looks like? Okay, so the... Can defense counsel see that? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, Agent Staley, the end that's broken off, that was the top end of the photograph? Yes. Is that correct? So the end closest to you over here would have been the end that had these items, the condoms and the other items attached to it. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Attorney McNamara, since defense counsel, could you at least show them the open box so they can see the contents as arranged inside the defense table? Because I think they were shielded from. Okay, good. I got it. Thank you. Photo 121 that I showed you previously. Is that a true and accurate representation? Of yes, it is. I just handed you a photo 123. There we go. Just another view of that upstairs bedroom with a couple of the placards that are present. Yes, it is. Is that a true and accurate representation of the original points you picked? Yes. Stacy's in 124. 124 is the same room, uh, same articles that were in there with the placards. Just a little bit closer view. Stacy's in 124, a fair and accurate depiction of. What is the point? Yes, it is. State's Exhibit 125. 125 is the same room. Uh, we've previously seen another photograph with the placards on the bed indicating where the uh, items were tied to it. Uh, those items, evidence, just a different view of the same room. Major Staley, previously you had identified the markers 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9 as being these articles of clothing attached to the bed frame. Yes, sir. It's bindings or ligatures. Now you can see number 5? Yes. As well? Correct. And is that also a, a, an article of clothing that was attached to the bed frame? I believe so, yes. So from this view, Agent Staley, we can see those bindings that were on that upstairs bed kind of evenly spaced out. Is that right? Yes. And at Stacey's in 125, is that a fair and accurate depiction of that area? Yes, it is. After, I just handed you Stacey's in 126, after taking out 
a, a wide shot here of these particular markers. Did you then photograph closer in on each one? Yes. So let's look at Stacy's at 126. What is that? It's a close up of placard number four indicating that gray article, how it was affixed to the bed. Not an honor, is that correct? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what is the point of the picture? Yes, it is. So four was the one that was, and as you're going into the room, at the top of the bed closest to you. In the yes, sir. State's Exhibit 127. One twenty-seven would be the opposing side of the bed, placard number five, and again an item that was tied to the bed. Okay. Fair and accurate depiction of what's the point of the fix? Yes, sir. States exhibit one twenty-seven. <coughs> This is 128. Excuse me, 128, thank you. Would be placard number six, and it shows there's a greenish blue article that's tied to the frame of the bed with placard number six. Was there any bedding on this mattress itself? That's just a mattress. Did you find any bedding nearby? There, I believe there was some bedding in that room, yes. States Exhibit 128, a fair and accurate depiction of what is the point to fit. Yes, it is. States Exhibit 129. Would be placard number seven. And we're seeing the article looks like it's kind of a grayish green color, uh, more gray now, tied to the bed frame at placard number seven. Agent Staley. Is it the same kind of knot with these three twenties? If you recall. I yeah, I'm not really a knot expert, but it appeared similar. Sure. Similar appearance, fair to say. Yes. Uh, so you see exhibit one twenty nine, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what it's according to the fix? Yes, sir. It's one twenty nine, here's one thirty. 130 showing placard number eight with that red article that's also tied to the bed. Looks like that might be a sweater. <coughs> Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it appears as though it should be yeah. for a sweater or something. Stacey's at 130. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what it's for you? Yes, it is. <coughs> Now, Stacey's exhibit 131. 131 is showing <coughs> there's a green article of clothing that's tied to the bed frame in placard number nine. Is that a very accurate depiction of what is before it's depicted? Yes, sir, it is. Exhibit 132. 132, uh, in previous photographs, when we were looking at the bed, overall photographs of the bed in the room, standing at the doorway at the foot of the bed, off to the far left corner in that room, there was a tin that was in the, the very corner of the room. That had a placard number 11 that was placed on that. And then there was some bedding articles that were on the floor that were placarded with number 10. So that's the bedding that you had referred to earlier? On yes. Placard 10 there? Okay. And at the lower right hand part of this photograph, is that the mattress from that? Yes, yeah, so it would be the foot of the mattress. Okay. <laughs> Stacey exhibit 132, a, a fair and accurate representation of what it is before it's fixed. Yes, it is. Stacey exhibit 133. 
133 is showing inside that room, looking back now towards the, what, what I would refer to as the head of the bed. That's not, that's more of a sofa, pull out sofa, but it, more towards the head of the bed, indicating the placards that were found with the ligatures attached to the bed frame with placards number one, two, and three just inside the threshold of that bedroom on the floor. As we zoom in on one, two, and three, what are those items? There's a Mountain Dew pop can, an air freshener can, and a lighter. Now that air freshener can, number two, that is a different air freshener can than the one that was over next to the suspected sexual device? Is that correct? It is a different one, yes. Okay. So that's two air freshener cans up here. Is that correct? Correct. The state's exhibit 133, a fair and accurate depiction of what is reported to depict. Yes, it is. After putting the placards down, these things that are, are kind of out in the open, did you do anything else in searching this part of the house, in this room? We looked underneath the mattress itself, underneath the bed. I'm handing you State's Exhibit 134. 134 would be some of the items that were found underneath the bed in that bedroom. What was found underneath the bed there? 25 would be, would appear to be women's underwear or an undergarment. And then 27 is a small bottle of lotion. And those were underneath that, that couch pull-up mattress that we saw before? Yes, sir. And it states it's in the 134 a fair and accurate depiction of what it is purporting to depict. Yes, it is. States it's in 135. Is that just a closer shot of the lotion? Yes, it is. Okay. Fair and accurate depiction of what is purported to depict? Yes, sir. We're going to just take it to 136. Were there other items that were found underneath that mattress? Yes. Excuse me, under the bed. Under bed? Yes. Please explain. 136 is a photograph flipping the, the bed frame back up into itself, trying to expose the floor and the items that would be on the floor. There were uh, articles of clothing that were noted on the floor. Placard 26 and placard 28 indicate those <coughs> items. Yes, it is. States Exhibit 137. We talked before about the lighter, the air freshener, the Mountain Dew can that will buy the door to the to the bedroom. Yes. Is that just a closer shot of that? It is, yes. And it states Exhibit 137, a fair and accurate depiction of what's reported to the victim. Yes, it is. Exhibit 138. We're moving down, down the <coughs> Yes. Is that that first floor room with the blue carpet? Yes. And then past that <coughs> cloth or tapestry, whatever it is, we'll, we'll be into that other living space. Is that correct? Correct. And so you looked underneath the couch? Yes. What did you find? There was a bag that had some clothing in it underneath the, the sofa there. Okay. It states exhibit 138, a fair and accurate depiction of what is reported to the fix. Yes, sir, it is. It states exhibit 139. 
139 is a photograph with placard 16 that is just inside the entryway at the back of the house. Uh, we're now at the threshold of the, the door that goes into the bathroom where that cell phone was located on the floor. Placard 16 was put in place for documentation purposes. Okay, I'm going to hand you again Stacey to 120, the evidence law in this case. Uh, Stacey to 139, is that a true and accurate representation? Of yes, sir, it is. Okay. So, BCI item 16, what is that item? Paper bat, well, on here it's a phone. Quantity of one found on the first floor in the bathroom, collected by myself on September 13th. For purposes of the record, I'm showing defense counsel states to 140. Okay. Agent Staley, did you collect BCI item 16? I did, yes. And did you provide that to anyone else? Or what did you do with it? I turned it over to the Ashland Police Department. To whom and when? Uh, Brian Evans on the 13th. Well, on the says on the 14th. Okay. So you collected BCI item 16 and provided that to Detective Evans. Yes, sir. I'm going to hand you State's Exhibit 140. Okay. Can you tell the jury what that is, please? Uh, on my label, it says evidence item number 16. Phone was collected by myself on the 13th and as noted on our report it was turned over to the Ashland Police Department. Okay, so that State's Exhibit 140 is the same item in the picture that we're looking at State's Exhibit 139. Yes, sir. BCI item 16. Yes, sir. Okay. You still have the scissors if you get those I'll return. Thank you. You would open that up please and show us what's inside. <laughs> cell phone. So that's the phone that you collected from just inside the bathroom on the first floor of the 363 code report. Correct. And we've got down at the bottom there, or I guess the top depending on how you want it, sealed in tape, dated and initials. My initials on September 13th. Okay. So, with this item and with the other items that you collected in this case, after you've photographed them first as they are, then you take a photograph of the placard down. Then when you take them, put them into a, an envelope of some kind, seal it initially. Yes. So I can ask you, is that in this substantially similar condition as it was when you found it on September, uh, September 13, 2016? I believe it is, yes. Okay. The battery may be dead. Okay. kitchen and we looked at uh, earlier photographs there were two bags in front of the stove on the kitchen floor um, one is a Walmart bag that had some items in it and then the other bag is a clear bag that also had some articles in it the clear bag is noted with placard number 22 and then we can't see the uh, placard for the blue bag the Walmart bag
So that's State's Exhibit 141? Yes, it is. Okay. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what's important to the case? Yes, it is. State's Exhibit 142. 142 is another photograph of the room that's adjacent to the kitchen. And now the placards have been put down for potential items of evidence in that room. As you can see, as we look around the room here, we're going to look at some of these a little more closely. But to the left, as we zoom in here, this is another angle that we saw yesterday of those items in the wicker basket. Yes. That appear to be obscured by that basket on the side. Yes. Those little glass roses that you mentioned yesterday? I believe that's what they are, yes. Okay. Now, to the right on that table, what do you see? It's like a flashlight. And what color is it? it? Appears to be red. Yes. What's attached to that <coughs> garment or piece of fabric? It looks like duct tape. And as we, <coughs> we testified yesterday about the duct tape that was on the top of the refrigerator. Yes, sir. As we zoom in up here, what's that hang from the wall? Uh, to the right of that tapestry on the walls, it looks like another roll of duct tape. Okay. Down on the floor here, we mark Blackard 32. Here's if there's a candle and that's something next to that candle. What is that? Behind the candle? Yeah. A, a jar of Vaseline or petroleum jelly. That's an open jar, is that right? Yes, it is. Is that the state that it was found in when you executed this search warrant on September 13, 2016? It is. <laughs> We're going to see other photos later in the state but on the bedside table there. Is that a packet of cigarettes? Yes. What kind of cigarettes are those? Uh, I'm not a smoker, so I would have to say Marlboro Black. Okay. We've got a better picture too. Zooming in on the lower right portion of the photo, there's a blanket. On top of that, there's placard 36. Yes. What is attached to that blanket? That gray duct tape. Again, it's an article of cloth that was knotted up. Not really sure exactly what it was, but it was knotted in similar fashion as some of the other items that were found in the house. And that item, marked by Clacker 39, was that where that was found? And you guys did that search for Clacker 34. Excuse me, Clacker 34, thank you. Yes. Okay. Meaning nobody moved it, that's how it was when the police got there. I believe so. State's Exhibit 142, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the area that's according to the bit? Yes, it is. Now we're going to get a little bit closer on a couple of these items. State's 
Stacey Exhibit 143. 143 is a photograph of one of those end tables that were in that room. Yes. And is that noting that black item underneath it? Yeah, at the time, I wasn't exactly sure what that was, but it appeared to be like a cellular phone. Okay, let's take a look at it. evidence label of uh, number 26. I have it descriptive as a fake cellular phone it was collected by me. And you sealed it and initialed it on the back? I did. Okay. Did you open that up? screen doesn't move, it doesn't do anything, none of the buttons will push in to activate anything. That's just a sticker instead of a screen, is that right? Yeah, it's the same no matter what you do with it, it doesn't ever change. Okay. So definitely not a phone um, on the top here. So the way it's photographed here, that's the, the back of it on State's Exhibit 143, is that right? Yes, sir. But we can see the, the top of it. Those two yes. metal points. Is that right? Yes. On the underside, it appears as if there's a way to charge it. Yeah, there's some type of port there for charging purposes, it looks like. Are you familiar with anything that's similar to that, Agent Stanley? Well. Or have you seen anything similar to that? I know that it was Googled at one point in time, and it's not a cell phone. Is that in uh, substantially the same condition as, as what you... <clears throat> yes, it is. Do you have some idea what that is? I was present when a Google search was done. Yes, it's a form of a stun gun. Okay. Made to look like a telephone, but not a telephone. Correct. Suspected to be a stun gun, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. So, Stacey, to 143, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what it's reporting to the victim? Yes, it is. Now, That is correct, yes. All right. In the process of doing this, were some evidence placards mistakenly reused? 
Going from the upstairs to the downstairs, yes, some of the placards were inadvertently reused. Okay, so this item, for example, we've got an evidence placard 28, but that had already been used upstairs, is that Correct. right? So this got its own, when it was put into the system, it got its own unique number to make sure it's kept <coughs> separate Correct. from other items. Okay. Yes. So I'm referring you back to the state's exhibit 120. Would the item that we just looked at that's in state's exhibit 143, this photograph, is that BCI item 76? Yes, it is. Okay. And you collected that? Yes. To whom did you provide it? To the Ashland Police Department, Detective Brian Evans. Okay. And uh, it's going to be the same for each one of these, is that correct? That you collected and provided to Detective Evans? Yes, I believe so. Okay. We'll go over each one to make sure. As far as BCI item 76, which again is states exhibit 144. You collect that gave to take that. Correct. All right. Stacy's in the 145. 145 is also a photograph of the uh, end table that was in that room beside the bed. So on this photo, in the center here, appears to be some, some used cigarettes, some cigarette butts. Yeah, it's a cap of some container possibly being used as an ashtray that has some cigarette butts and ashes within it. And down at the, at the bottom, you see that Marlboro Black package, is that right? Yes, sir. Is that collected in evidence? I believe it was. Talk about that in a second, uh, but I want to bring to your attention this orange item here. What is that? I believe that's a razor. Item 146 would be evidence number 77 on my log sheet. It's a Marlboro pack from the nightstand. Now, is this another one where the, the placard wasn't right? The placard didn't yes. Read? Okay. So it says 29 in the photo, but we're actually talking about BCI item 77. Correct. All right. And so we have... The same evidence sticker you've described previously, a BCI sticker, appears to be an Ashland PD sticker, is that right? Yes. You took this into evidence? Yes, sir. You just looked at the back there for purposes of the record and observed what? My initials and the date that it was collected. Okay. And I'm going to show you the evidence log again, State's Exhibit, I think it was 120. To whom was that provided? Detective Brian Evans. Okay. And then what was the date? 914. Okay. So go ahead and open that up and we'll take a look. Stacey's exhibit 147. 
I think I asked you, but 145, true and accurate depiction of what's yes. important? Yes. 147. 147 is a photograph atop of the refrigerator that was in that ground floor bedroom. All right. And when I asked you about this yesterday, when we were just going through the photos of, of the scene as it was before placards were put down, you'd indicated the uh, duct tape was of interest? Yes. So you marked that? Yes. And the item with the placard 30 right there. Is that correct? Yes. I put the placards down, yes. And that item was also collected, is that correct? Item 30? Yes. Yes. So the defense counsel states to 148. Yep, yep. Major Staley, I'm handing you, excuse me, states to 148. Let's take a look at the outside real quick. What is this? Evidence item number 30, uh, it says stun gun. I put down stun gun on top of it for item 30. Okay, and that's from reading your BCI sticker? Yes. Okay, and if we look at the back, we see Collected initials. by me on the 13th, yes. Detective Brian Evans on the 14th. Of September? Yes. Thank you. And State Exhibit 147, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what's going to depict? Yes, it is. is the uh, would be the floor in that ground floor bedroom and we're looking at placard number 32 and I believe that's the uh, canister of Vaseline or petroleum jelly. That you already indicated was open when you responded? Correct, yes. On the ground there Next to the detergent bottle. What is that? Let me zoom in. Is that a dead fly? Oh, yeah. That, yeah, dead fly. Season 2 to 149, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what's important to depict? Yes, it is. Season 2 to 150. 150 is, uh, there was a table uh, off to the, the, from where we were looking into that room, kind of off to the left of us, now there was a table, there was a canister that was on that table that had some items in it. Okay. Let's go back in just a second. Looking at State's Exhibit 142, I believe. In the lower left hand corner here, there's placard 38. Yes. Is that what you're referring to? That table is where yes, sir. that bucket and those items were found? Correct. So now with Stacey to the 150, we're looking into that bucket. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And item 38 
38. Did you collect that? Yes. What is that? Um, it's a cell phone. It's underneath that checkered cover or whatever. But we're off to the to the left, you can see a screen. I believe it says Microsoft on it. That's a cell phone that was in that container. So if that's council states, it's one fifty one. Did you see that I'm going to hand you States Exhibit 151? Could you please describe uh, what that is based on the indicators on the... I website? have on my label, sub phone, evidence item number 38. It was collected by me on the 13th. You did want me to open it, right? Yes, please. Thank you. Agent Staley, what you've got in your hand there, and we've marked as States Exhibit 151, is that the Microsoft phone that you collected from the interior of 363 Culver Court during the search warrant? Yes, sir. Is that in substantially the same condition it was when you collected it? I believe it is, yes. Now, you yourself, you didn't do any analysis or examination of the contents of this phone, is that correct? I do not, no. You collected it, and then you gave over to other folks. Turn it over to the Ashland Police Department. And for uh, this item, State Exhibit 151, BCI item 38, to whom did you give this and when? I believe that was also turned over to Detective Brian Evans. Okay. And that's what's indicated on State Exhibit 120, your evidence log, is that right? Yes, sir. State Exhibit 150, fair and accurate depiction? Yes, sir. State Exhibit 152. What is that? Photograph in the same room. Uh, again, we're seeing the end table just off to the, the side of the bed. Got placards number 35 and 33 down in that room. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what is the points of the picture? Yes, it is. On the table there, just to the left of the spoon? Yes. This, what is this object? It's pink. I believe it's lipstick. Okay. And just above that, below the remote, does that make up as well? Uh, I believe so. Yes, it is. It's a close-up of on that table, we see the lipstick and that makeup that you had just previously asked about with placard number 45 uh, that was placed on there by myself. Is that a fair and accurate description <coughs> of what it's purporting to depict? It is. States Exhibit 154. What is that? The placard number 46 was placed on another container. Um, that also was in the room downstairs that was that bedroom adjacent to the kitchen. And if we go back, is that that? We can look at 162152, a barrel container? Yes. And this was in, so go back to 154, that's on that side table next to the. Yes. 
Mark that with placard 46. Correct. My evidence label number 46, it says set of Mitsubishi keys from the nightstand that were in that bucket. Okay, so when we look at the photograph for 154, we can see some keys in that bucket. Yeah. Kind of on top of the is that right? Correct. And so are those the items that you collected? Yes. Now, on the back, <clears throat> at the top, those are your initials, right? Yes, sir. 91316. Correct. Indicating you collected it. Is that right? Yes. And then at, at some other points, they were taken out and, and used these keys. Is that right? Yes, sir. You don't know about that, but we know that there's some cuts and some seals and some dates and signatures. Correct. Okay. So go ahead and open that up, State's Exhibit 155. <coughs> Are those the Mitsubishi keys that you recovered from the Yes. Okay. And you know there are Mitsubishi keys because they've got the logo on there? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Are those in substantially the same condition as when you collected them on September 13, 2016? I believe so. And for this item, BCI item 46 states it's in the 155. To whom did you provide this item? To the police department. Brian Evans. Is that also on September 14? Yes. Yes, it is. Please do it. One fifty six. What is that? Further that was this, that's a photograph of the same bucket that we just got the Mitsubishi keys out of. Looking uncovering down further deeper, there's a pair of brass knuckles. The state is in 156 a fair and accurate condition of what's reported to the bank? Yes, it is. It's in 157. Again, the brass knuckles, placard number 48. That was used for documentation purposes. So you took them out of where they were. You photographed first where they were found, and then you took them out so you could put a placard in it. Correct. My label evidence 48 says brass knuckles collected by me on the 13th of September. Okay, please open and we'll see what's inside. Agent Staley, are those the brass knuckles that you 
recovered from 363 Covert Court on September 13th, 2016? Yes, sir. And that states Exhibit 158, is that correct? Yes. To whom did you provide that? I believe Detective Evans of the Ashton Police Department. Is that what you were, uh, evidence logging the case? Yes. That was on September 14, 2016? Correct. Photograph that's on the same end table. Um, placard number 49 was placed down for evidence on a set of keys. Were those also found in that bubble? I believe so, yes. If we go back to the station 156 and kind of zoom in, you can see some of those. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 159, a fair and accurate depiction of what's the point of the case. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and States Exhibit 160. <coughs> we talked about in previous photographs the cloth bindings that were attached to the mattress. On the, on the first floor. Did you have a look at the other side of that mattress that was against the wall? Yes. States Exhibit 160, what do you see there? The mattress had been pulled away from the wall and now we're looking at the side of the mattress that would have been against the wall and we have some articles of clothing that are tied to the mattress handles. Agent Staley, did the way that those bindings were placed in the mattress appear to be consistent with the other bindings that you had seen at yes. the residence? Yes. Similar, yes. And the states exhibit 160 a fair and accurate depiction of what's reported to the fit? Yes, sir. 160? Excuse me, 161. 161 is a close up of what we just went over. Uh, placard number 52 was introduced in there for documentation of evidence. And that states exhibit 161 a fair and accurate depiction? Yes, it is. Exhibit 162. 162 is a photograph of the other handle on the mattress. The red white one that we just previously looked at would have been closer closer to us. This one would be the furthest one away. Probably further back into that corner, more towards the head of that mattress, which was against the wall. And the states exhibit 162 a fair and accurate depiction of what's important to you. Yes, sir, it is. The mattress has been lifted off and there was a billfold type iron found between the mattress and the box springs, I guess, or the, another mattress. And you put a plaque in 54 next to that? Yes, sir. Is that a fair and accurate description or fair and accurate depiction of that billfold after that mattress was lifted up? Yes. States Exhibit 164, did you open up that little container? We did. What did you find? Inside contained an, an Ohio ID for Mr. Great, Sean Great.
Photograph 164, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the items that were removed from that billfold or, or container? Yes, it is. My evidence item number 54 is a leather pouch with identification and miscellaneous cards in the name of Sean Gray. It's found under the mattress. There's a social security card with the name Sean Michael Great on it. There is an Ohio identification card with the name of Sean M. Great. Various coupons, maybe some receipts. There's a Huntington Bank, I believe it's a debit card. Uh, the name Stacy Hicks on it. And that item, that debit card, was in the leather pouch that you found underneath the mattress, as you've previously described? Correct. Well in the bag. In the bag, yeah. Yes, sir. Is that item, Stacey's in 165, a leather pouch with Sean Grace, Ohio driver's license, Sean Grace, <coughs> or Stacey Hicks' debit card. Is that in substantially the same condition as when you found it on September? I believe so, yes. And did you provide that to anyone from the Ashland Police Department? Yeah, we've gone to the Ashland Police Department, I believe Brian Evans. Okay, is that what you were Evans Law? Yes. And was that on what date? Uh, the 14th. Attorney McNamara, I think we're going to take a noon recess now for lunch. Be a good place to break. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a recess. It's now 12.32 on the court's uh, clock. Take a one-hour recess. Please be back in the jury room by 12.30. Or, excuse me, 1.30. I did the same thing yesterday. 1.30. Please be back in the jury room. Uh, hopefully, we'll get other folks started into the courtroom before uh, 1.30 so that we can get started shortly thereafter not have you wait. Uh, on us to get things going. So courts in recess until basically 1.30. Again, don't discuss this matter with one another. Don't draw any conclusions. Don't form any opinions. <laughs>